now to have automation in place. And um, we call it Mofna. It's a functional testing framework you can use. Um, and um, so we have actually automated about 110 tests out of the 330 tests from our Litmus uh, test suite. And uh, it's about 30%. So when we run those tests uh, on the platforms, um, those are done in seven minutes. And we can run everything parallel on all the support platforms. So we are really done in 10 minutes with everything prepared to one page or one person to run through all those tests. It would be pretty amazing. And then um, the remaining 200 tests, uh, we have people who are running those who test manually in the remaining two days and um, to make sure that everything works as expected. Um, what I've started lately uh, is the execution of um, localization tests uh, for all localized tools. Um, so we got a great feedback here. Um, so I will come back to that later uh, for the demonstration so I can uh, explain it to you a bit better. And um, what is newly done uh, is uh, the fully automated update test. So we can really scrape the FTP server, get all the builds, and run everything automated. So we don't have to do anything. We only trigger the update test and then uh, get the results and before that all the engineering and then the update. And what I've already told, uh, we run all those tests on all platforms in parallel. So who is in QA? Um, QA itself is not so large, so it's a core team is only about 30 people. So uh, those 30 people working in different areas, desktop, mobile, services and automation. And um, we have a couple of other contractors uh, who help us for leases. So and that's a really pretty small team. And uh, we really need all the automation in place so we can manage all those many different leases we have at the moment. Um, additionally, we have a lot of committee members here who run through our manual tests. We have a lit a litmus, um, mostly on a daily basis. Um, I think most of the users are currently nightly users. So what Chris already told yesterday, we have about 80,000 nightly users for Firefox for Opals and about 15,000 15, for all the Firefox branches. And then um, something that's really a pretty good number for us. And uh, we want to really get those people to help us here in, in testing. And uh, that's really something we want to do with the crowdsourcing. So um, that's I come over now to the real uh, content of this presentation. So we want to get these users to run our tests, to report everything to us, so that we can use those testing us uh, to improve Firefox. We have a great community around the world. That's probably the best thing we can have at, at all of other companies. So we have people in each country around the world who can run our tests and sell a localized version of Firefox and uh, with extensions installed and whatever else. So that's pretty helpful for us. Um, we only have two outreach uh, that we have to the extension right now. So um, what do we expect from crowd testing? Um, what I mentioned before, uh, we want to have a higher quality of localized builds, so we can add more and more tests uh, depending on the feedback from localizers, what they want to have tested. And um, we uh, know, um, we don't know anything um, about system methods test runner. Normally, on our side, we have some systems running the daily test, we know the configuration, we know how much uh, memory on start the CPU, how long it takes. On the user system, we don't know nothing about that. So that's really pretty, can be, um, give us really pretty good information, so we want it part of this in the future. Um, the same, uh, what I skipped here, uh, for different locations on the globe. So um, uh, depending on the redirects, uh, when you see it, um, you're in France, you open Google, and you get redirected to the French page, or you are in Australia, you yeah. have the Australian page, so that we can also find out if there are differences depending on where you are located on the, on the world. And that but at least what I've mentioned here already, um, performance related information, so um, that can be give us good information um, on what we have got before here, uh, startup times and all that stuff. 
so we can put up the information to work. So what is necessary for us? Um, in the past, has been shown is that installing Mosmo is quite difficult for the users. So we wanted to have something um, which makes it really easy uh, to install Mosmo on the user system. And any installation we want to do should not affect uh, the global system of the user. Yeah, so we only have a test environment located on the user system. We install software inside the test environment, but nothing else gets polluted. And that was one requirement um, what we had here. And all the needed tools um, mm. uh, which are necessary to run our MOSMA tests are in the MOSMA client environment. Uh, we have preconfigured, uh, which gets downloaded, is, um, extracted, and prepared everything. And um, <coughs> that's really everything you really need for that. And um, so, uh, additionally, um, as more tests we have, as more feedback we can get from our users, uh, localizers, add on outdoors. And that's one reason why we have to add more and more tests. Uh, we are waiting for feedback, so we can work on to add more tests and scenarios and um, to get more feedback. Um, we like that um, when users are running our tests, it doesn't tell when they have the results locally on their own box. So um, it's really important for us to get those results. So um, we have to make sure that we can report all the results and we can use this uh, for analyzation so we can identify the problematic areas. And um, last but not least, uh, we have to promote it even more uh, so more and more people know about this exercise. And it helps a lot, we have already seen. So how it works, um, we have implemented it as an extension itself, so it's compatible with Firefox 4.0 and Firefox 3.6. Um, I have skipped 3.5 because uh, this brand will not use any longer, so um, we don't have to care about that, and I think most people will run tests in Firefox 4.0, so that's completely fine. Um, we have automated completely the setup of the environment, so you only have to click one single button, so everything gets prepared, you can run the test, and that's, that's all we have to do here. And the largest part is installing the extension. So you have to restart the browser, so we don't have a chat back for that yet. Uh, we will see what can be done in the, in the future. Um, for the UI, we have a really simplified UI uh, where we can uh, say which application you want to test, uh, which test run you want to execute. And um, I will add some more stuff in the future. For the moment, it's important for us that we can run our tests, send the reports, and we can. Uh, analyze those reports. Um, <coughs> although we have to make sure that the, when we run those tests, uh, users are always operating on the latest um, version of the test because commonly we fix tests on a daily basis. Those gets uh, checked in and sort of repository, and users really have to use those. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't make sense for us. And um, you can this part execute and report to our database. Here, a quick chart how it works itself. So um, you're running Firefox in your normal so daily user profile. You have installed the Mosmo Cloud extension in this profile. One thing we have to take care about is um, when we are running those tests, as I can have data loss or whatever else, so we cannot use the user's profile. So we always have to execute our tests in another profile, in, a, in another Firefox instance. So uh, all that stuff is only possible via yeah. our test environment. So Mosmo is running as a command line interface. It's a <coughs> Python test uh, environment. So um, we, from the extension, we call it Python process. And it executes Firefox with a testing profile. Mosmo as extension installed. So uh, these two processes can communicate with each other. We get the latest tests and scripts from the repositories, execute the tests, and finally can uh, report to our database. <laughs> what I mentioned before, here are uh, some results what we got from our LTN tests. Um, this is uh, one test for, I think, BG locale. Um, Bulgarian, I think. Uh, so um, we are testing here in this specific case um, access keys. 
um, if they are used <coughs> multiple times in the same scope, uh, which is normally not allowed. And um, at the same time, we are also testing elements uh, who, uh, which are cropped. Uh, it can happen that when you translate Firefox to your own language, most of the time that the string gets longer. And if you don't adjust the width of the window or the tab element, uh, it's not, it, it gets cut off. Uh, so this two tests we have in place at the moment. Um, we have some bugs in there, so mostly we rely now on the access keys. So we, I don't know if you can read this stuff uh, from, from the tag. Uh, so you get a list of elements uh, which are affected um, by some multiple usage. It's really hard to read. Uh, that's why we have the feature in place that we can create screenshots uh, from the specific cases. So uh, it's easier to see here uh, all the uh, names here with the, with the underline. Uh, these are the access keys. So uh, they are used multiple times. So you really can see, OK, these elements, we have to update all the entities. And um, it's pretty helpful for localized access. And we got a lot of check-ins in the last days. That's what we have reported. So, um, I think uh, we will continue uh, to run all of this against the next beta and final releases. So um, what's left for us? Uh, only some points here. Um, we don't know how uh, reliable our tests are. We have run our tests in our system, so we know what happened, but we don't know how, it, how, it, how, reli how reliable it is in other locales uh, or on other systems. So it's something we have to figure out here and uh, how we can understand we have to improve uh, our test in the case. Um, we have big problems with the focus. So um, the test itself or the Firefox instance on the test has to run in the front, always in the front, so the user cannot switch the application. Uh, otherwise, uh, any test which relies on text input uh, and the auto pop up um, will fail. So that's something we could have a solution. So we are working together with the Selenium guys uh, who have implemented native events, events and uh, it can help us here. But we are not sure yet if we can implement it in our, in our side or which way we want to choose here. But it's a really interesting and truly really, uh, big problem we have to solve. Um, what I mentioned before, uh, for now we only allow it to run our test um, completely. Uh, it takes seven minutes, and in the future we have implemented all the tests, it can take about 30 minutes. So we really have to find ways uh, to allow the user to select type, um, types of tests, or he can select tests if he want to run, uh, he can, or to help us in um, fixing problem tests. All the stuff will be included in the future. Uh, for now, it's really only for the test exit future. Um, important for us here, we have started with an end test, which was a great success in the next quarter. Um, we will continue with add-ons. So we will uh, ask add-on authors to create more small tests for the add-ons, so we can run those tests uh, on our side uh, and from the cloud. So I think uh, that's a great feedback to make sure that the add-on is going correctly. And um, Something else, our endurance tests uh, we have done already, or we have started with, so we can measure the performance uh, of Firefox over time uh, by doing the same stuff again, like opening tab or open panorama, go panorama all the time for uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and we have already seen some great interesting facts uh, out of those tests. Um, and finally, we really need feedback from you. Okay, um, so sure about the time, Brian. So, yeah, we have five uh, more minutes. Okay, so um, I have a bit prepared here already. So um, this is a main profile. So as you can see, uh, Cloud is not installed yet. <coughs> I will simply install it. Restart the browser. And it appears in the tools menu. So we have Cloud on the face here. By default, it has been selected the application you are currently r running, and uh, you have a set of different tests you can run. Uh, the general test run, the first one, is what we are running for our release tests, uh, which are one to one copy of the Linux test. Add and end tests are access keys and uh, cropped elements, and add ons tests. We only have two, uh, two add ons here. We are testing uh, only one or two tests. 
uh, which is only for self. Yeah. So let's figure out what we can do here. Um, I select the add an end test run. I want to run it with my mind people. And let's, let's test start. Um, in this case, I've already prepared the test environment. So I haven't relied on the network here. So uh, normally it takes up to 5, 10 seconds before until everything has been set up. Here's a, another instance of Firefox gets started with another profile. And in this case, we are running through the profile this dialog, each sub element, each sub window. We have to check for uh, multiple access keys. Um, we have to run it twice. Uh, now we check for the prop elements. <coughs> we collect all this information. Uh, we create screenshots for those test failures which appear. And we should have been sent the information. Now we have to check in the preferences. We send it to the cloud database. So I can wait a second. So it should appear here at the top. Yeah, that is correct. So we run this. We have two parts of but also two test failures. So when we click on here, we see that there's a big number of things uh, which we have identified here. Uh, these are for cropped elements, which is not going to be broken correctly. Uh, that's important bit here for the access keys. Uh, those elements, those endless I screenshots. At the same time, <coughs> we have saved as a screenshot on, on this. So you can really, uh, that's an, an, another look here, sorry. Uh, but you already have it present on your disk, so you can work on that. You can fix your problems in your locale. You can run the test again until F, 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 everything appears correctly. <coughs> okay. So um, if you want to get more information, uh, Quantum Cloud can be found on AMO. Um, if you are interested to help us uh, to create tests or have any ideas how we can improve our testing, Join us on qualityteamwithbill.org. Uh, Mosman code on GitHub, um, Mosman tests, um, if you're interested in to write some tests, and we have even more areas uh, you can help us. Uh, yeah. Any questions? That's <coughs> the end. You're creating a new profile before uh, running the test. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, maybe by uh, duplicating the user profile could give you uh, more tests to the use Firefox. Uh, we have some problems with some extensions. Um, so um, for the normal DFT test or general test one we are doing, uh, we can't do this this way. Yeah. Um, but it should be easy enough to. Uh, then an option where we can edit a checkbox, we can check it. If you want to have an existing profile, so we can clone it and can use this profile for testing. Uh, it's good, um, but not at the, not at the moment. Uh, in this system, how do you deal with false positives? Uh, is there any handling of false positives? Uh, not right now. So uh, we don't have any idea. Oh, uh, the question was how we handle uh, or how it is uh, the test us. So we don't have any idea yet. Uh, we, we have uh, updated the add-on to AMO two weeks ago, so it's really fresh on, on AMO, so um, I'm just waiting for the feedback. Uh, we haven't gotten so far anything. So uh, once we know what we have to do, uh, I can give you the answer. But for now, sorry, um, I have to One more time, Brian, or for one question? Uh, yeah, we have time for a couple more questions. Yeah. Okay, cool. Excellent. Um, quick one. How does Modsmill decide when to actually restart the browser? Uh, we have two different types of tests. We have non-restart tests and we have restart tests. So uh, at the moment, there are two different applications. And um, we call it separately. Uh, in the future, for Modsmill 2.0, which will be released by end of March, we will combine it to one single ex ex extension. So we have so we have manifest files that we can indicate okay, this 
tests in this folder are normal tests and uh, this folder contains uh, recent tests. So we are training a fresh profile before uh, we execute the test in a, in a folder and for the restart we are using the same profile again and again and again. So we only can test the installation of add-ons, uh, installation or theme installation, uh, switching of themes and that's possible in that way. Yeah, I'm asking because um, like for the Yeltsin test run, the startup and teardown is about as long as the actual test that we run. So we could actually cut off time by running both the crop test and yeah. the XSP test. Um, we have to find out how we can reset the UI. That's the main problem we had uh, because we are storing it in the local store RDF. So we somehow have to reset everything if you have an idea. I would be up for that. <laughs> so we can There's remove it with the normal test. Ponies, so that's therefore perfect. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so um, yeah. okay. if, we, if we can find a way, we can finally move those tests to a non test. So um, okay. don't forget to execute the trigger. OK. If no one else has questions, you can find me around here. So we can talk to you later. Thanks.